Trader's Corner is brought to you by IG. Good evening and welcome to Trader's Corner. As always, I'm joined by Garth McKenzie, the founder and editor of Trader's Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julissa. Garth, at some points in a year, you're going to have a rough patch. Mm. Uh, and it's actually happened since we started the show five years ago. And unfortunately, it seems as if you're in the rough patch at the moment. In the rough and not getting onto the greens. Uh, so on that note, tell us about uh, the most recent trade. Yeah, that's right. It's Steinhoff this time. And I call these things clusters. So a cluster where you just have, you know, you string a couple of losing trades together. Also, you obviously get clusters where you string a number of winning trades together, and we've had plenty of those as well. But mm -hmm. it is always inevitable that you're going to hit a cluster of losing trades now and again. And I'm not sure how many it is in a row for us, but it feels like it's been a while <laughs> since we've really had a, a, a really decent trade on this show. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had Steinhoff this week, which has been stopped out, and we'll talk about this now. I know recently before that it was redefined, and then we've had a couple of others before that as well. So it hasn't exactly been the best couple of months for me. Certainly, I reckon about three months or so, it's been a bit of lean times for us. I mean, just on that note, the experience that you've had in the market, does it make you a little bit more sanguine about this? Because um, as a trader, confidence is very important. Mm -hmm. And if you start losing your confidence, you second guess yourself, you maybe make bad calls, you start getting all jittery around your trades, and you can make some really bad decisions. That's very true. Uh, but remember that what we do with our strict adherence to stop losses and our disciplined approach on this show is we make sure that the losses are never that big and that they're never catastrophic. So we, we typically risk a maximum of 2% of trading capital on any one trade. Recently, I've been going up to a maximum of only 1% of trading capital on, uh, on, on the trades that we've been doing. And, you know, the nice thing about losing 1% of your capital is that you still have 99% of it left afterwards. So that's, that's the kind of thing that's not going to destroy your confidence. And, uh, and, 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 and it's important that. So yeah. your stop loss does two things for you. It protects your financial capital, but it also protects your emotional capital, i.e. your confidence. So certainly, uh, as much as it's been a bit of a tough time for us, my confidence is not battered at all. Uh, I still, I mean, I, I know that these, these things happen from time to time. With trading, you do hit rough patches. Mm -hmm. It'll come right. I, I've shown for six years that our philosophy and the proper trading principles that we always talk about on this show do work. But of course, now and again, you are going to hit clusters of bad times as well as clusters of good times. Yeah. Okay, well, talk us through what happened with Steinhoff. All right, so Steinhoff, the graph of it is up on the screen at the moment. Now, what I'd identified last week was that we were in the throes of forming this triangle pattern. And typically, uh, a, a perfect triangle structure has four and then a fifth wave. So four waves followed by a fifth wave that usually breaks out. So in this case, we were looking at wave one, two, three, four, and then I was expecting a fifth wave to break to the upside. And statistically, two out of three times, these triangle patterns will break out in the direction of the trend. So in this case, because the trend is up for Steinhoff, I would have betted that two out of three times that triangle was mm -hmm. going to break to the upside. Now look, to be fair, the safest thing to do would have actually been to wait for the breakout through the top of that triangle and then buy, because that would have been, you know, doing it with added confirmation. I was perhaps a little bit bold to go in and just assume that after we had the fourth wave, we were then going to find support at this 83 rand area and then move up and break out to the top side. Mm -hmm. um, as it turned out, it didn't. You can see that it's actually broken to the downside there. And we've seen the stock following through a little bit to the downside. Now, we went long of 2,300 CFDs last week, and my price was 84 rand per share. Stop loss was 82 rand 50. And I was looking for targets up at the higher levels, at 86.50 and then at 90 Rand. Um, unfortunately, that didn't work out. And as you can see, the price of that stock did break down below the bottom of that triangle. And we were stopped out at the end at 82 Rand 38. So a little bit of slippage on that stop loss from where I wanted to get out. And the share price has traded lower. But nevertheless, it's, it ended up losing us uh, 4,646 Rand, which is not... The end of the world, it's about one and one and a bit percent mm. of our capital. So certainly not the end of the world. What I did say last week was that if we were to see the share break that stop loss and move lower, then the likelihood was that we were going to see it find support around this lateral area um, at about 80 rand or 80 rand and 50 cents. And certainly that does appear to have now been the case. And the, the share price has found support there. And it appears to now be bouncing back up again. 
Okay, so the question now is, well, why didn't you maybe set the stop loss lower at 80 Rand? And um, were you too hasty to cut out of the position? Because you, you use manual stop losses, you don't have automatic stop losses. Yes, I do use manual stop losses, and that's why we get sometimes a little bit of slippage like we've got over here now. Um, you, look, in, in retrospect, I suppose the safest thing to do would have been to wait for it to come down to 80 Rand and reverse up from there like, it, like it's done now, um, because then we could have got a better risk to reward ratio. But it's, it, it is always easier in hindsight to look sure. back and say this. And, and I suppose to the other part of your question, is, is my strict adherence to risk management uh, almost... Uh, shooting yourself in the foot sometimes. Yeah, shooting myself in the foot, or, or is it perhaps too strict sometimes mm. to the extent that it becomes counterproductive? And I suppose th this is an example of maybe that where it, where it is the case. But then at this, by the same token, how many trades have we had recently where we've been stopped out and the share price has gone a lot lower? Well, look you know, at just, Zeta, for example. Exactly. Look at <clears throat> Zeta, look at uh, Redefine recently. Mm. Redefine also fell a long way after we were stopped out. So, you know, th there's no... Um, holy grail in terms of stop losses, unfortunately. So I, I still believe that the philosophy that we follow here is right. We, we need to make sure that we keep the losses small. Sometimes, yes, you're going to get stopped out unnecessarily and then the share price moves back up and does exactly what you thought the share was going to do, as it looks like will probably be the case here. But then on other occasions, you're going to find that your stop loss really did save you and, and, and it saved you from a lot of bigger losses. And in my experience, more often than not, that has been the case. I've been very grateful for the fact that I executed a stop loss when I did because it often would have resulted in bigger losses. Yeah. Okay, well, as you say, it's uh, about 1% of the portfolio, so not catastrophic by any means. No. Garth, moving on then, um, you're not uh, put off by this week's loss. You're going to go long um, of uh, the top 40. And, but, but before we talk about that, I know you want to discuss the option structure that you have in place in case there is a fall in the market. Yeah, yeah that's right. So I'm going to quickly look at the chart of the top 40 over here, and then also just it's overlaid with our option structure, which runs out to the December futures closeout. And the option structure is there. In this case, we, we've got it as protection for the downside. Now, last week on the show, I mentioned that it did look as if the market was beginning to come off a little bit, and that if the market were to trade down towards this area around about 46,000, that's where our option structure starts to kick in in terms of providing us with insurance, if you want, on the downside. And that I would most likely look to, to buy against the structure if the market started to trade down to that area. So that's what we're going to unpack now this week mm. and talk about it, because I have gone long against the option structure. I've gone long of the top 40 using the micro CFDs that IG Markets offers. Let's just go back a step quickly, and what I want to do is explain how the option structure was ar arisen and how we, how we created this thing. This, these options are traded on SAFEX or on the derivatives division of the JSE, if you like. They're not traded as CFDs. They're actually traded as um, futures, uh, it, uh, options on futures, rather, on the, on the derivatives div division of the JSE, just to put that out there. Now, this is a graph which shows the, the, along the bottom axis there, we've got all the different levels on the top 40 index. Yeah. And then above the line here, we've got our profit, and below the line, we've got our loss. Now, what I did initially, right, I've gone long of one contract of a 46,000 strike put option, and for that I paid 16,374 Rand. Now, as you can see, I pay away that premium of 16,000 Rand over there. That green line below the, the, the zero line, if you want, that's illustrating the pay away of the premium in this case. Then that thing begins to make some money, and, and it'll continue to make money as the market falls all the way down to zero. Um, that's the typical payoff of a put option structure. Now, that's great. The thing is to pay away 16,000 Rand to get downside protection is quite a lot of money mm -hmm. in this case. I I'm buying well, the exposure of that one put option, if you like, is 460,000 Rand short, but I'm paying 16,000 Rand for that. So you can say I'm paying around about 4% as a premium for that. The market has to fall 4% or more before I start to even see a profit yes. on these options. And because I'm buying protection all the way down to naught, I mean, that's a bit silly because the market's not going to go to naught. So I can comfortably sell away some of that downside participation. And in, in the effort to do that, what I've done is I've sold short some other put options. So I sold short one contract of a 43,000 strike put, and for that I received 7,008 Rand. I sold short another put option with a 41,000 strike, and for that I received 3,974 Rand. I then sold another option short, which this time was a call option. In other words, all the way to the right-hand side here, up at 50,000, 
I've sold a, a, a 50,000 strike call, and for that I received a premium of 3,881 rand. So um, what that basically means, if you take all the, pre the premiums that I received, the 3,881 plus the 7,008 rand plus 3,974, you, you add all those up and it, it comes close to funding the 16,000 rand pay away that we, we actually paid out for that 46,000 strike put. Now, I know this is all quite complex, so let's just tidy it up a little bit. That yellow line that I put onto the screen there now is the overall payoff of these four different option structures together. And if we neaten it up further, it looks like that. Basically, what it means is that above 46,000, we would have paid away our premium of 1,500 rand, but it starts to make money below 46,000 for us, and then it makes a maximum profit of just over 28,000 rand, and that happens between 41,000 and 43,000 on the top 40 index. We only would start to lose money again below 38,000. So what I'm saying is that this thing gives us a huge amount of downside protection. Now, given that the market has pulled back the way it has recently, and given what I said last week about wanting to buy against these options in, in the event of a market pullback, let's have a look at what's happened now. So there again, we've got this gr option, uh, this graph of the top 40 index. You can see we've made almost, you can call that potentially a double top type of thing, up at 49,100 over there. Now, the market has pulled back quite sharply in the last week or two. It's got down to this 46,000 area right there where our option structure mm -hmm. would start to to work for us in the event that the market went lower. But you're going to go and buy something now. Exactly, that's it. Now, I've got the confidence of knowing that these options will protect us if the market falls. So now I can go along and I can buy. What I've done is I've gone and bought three contracts of the IG market's top 40 micro CFD. Mm -hmm. So what this is, it's a, it's a CFD where by each contract represents two rand per point on the top 40 index. I've gone in at 46,000, which is the exact level of where our option yes. structure starts to work for us, which is nice. Keep in mind, if I'm going uh, three contracts long of a two rand per point structure, then this, what it means is that I'm effectively taking an exposure of six rand per point long on the top 40 index. These options that I've got represent 10 rand per point on the downside. So essentially, it puts me in a position now where I'm going to be long of 6 rand per point on the way up from 46,000. If the market were to go lower, then those options will still work for us. And then I'm going to be lo uh, short, essentially, 4 rand per point on the downside. Okay. Garth, um, so in the next two minutes, we have to sort of wrap up. But yeah. um, you did buy against uh, an option structure last year, and that was when the market fell in a heap, and it was a really hairy time for you. Is this going to be quite clean, so you're not kind of tied in to the, the downside, so you're not hedging the one against the other? It's just a, a simple, it's, straight transaction. Yeah. Look, if we, if we look at the overall payoff, I'll show you, because I, I, we did do that before. We bought against the structure, and it nearly hurt us last year in, in 2014. This time, I'm a lot more confident that the market is actually going to stay up at these elevated levels. One of the main reasons is because we've got the SAB Miller deal that's on the table, that is 15% of the top 40 index yeah. that's effectively frozen. So that's not going to really change. And then a number of the other stocks are very oversold. If we quickly look at this payoff that I showed you now, that's our, our overall put spread payoff. What I've done is I've gone long of these three contracts of the micro CFD, and that payoff is illustrated by the dotted line there. Now what this does is it changes the whole payoff of this thing. If you look at it com combined now, it looks like that. So here we are at around about, well, today we're at about 47,000, so we're, we're already in the money on this. But what it means is that from 46,000, whether the market goes higher or lower, we'll still make some money here, mm. irrespective. I'm more inclined to think we go higher from here, and that's why I've stacked the, 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 the payoff towards the upside here. We had only run into trouble if the market goes down below 41,000, and I'm, I really don't see that happening between now and December. Mm. So I'm relatively content to be uh, long of it here. Okay. So in terms of just looking at it again on the graph, there you can see the overall payoff. Below 46,000, we make money. Above 46,000, we make money. Only down here at 41,000, we run into, into problems. And that would have to be a catastrophic collapse? It would be, yeah. Okay. Gosh, so what does the portfolio look like then, just to wrap up? All right, so these are the most recent relevant trades. There's our put spread structure with a premium of 1,500 Rand paid away. There's that top 40 CFD that I spoke about. We are up 7,000 Rand on that already. Hmm. And then our Steinhoff loss, unfortunately, is 4,600 Rand. So overall, we're up 43% for the year to date. 
So still looking good and uh, close, to a, or close to a new high for this year. Yeah, so even though you've had a, a, a cluster, uh, and not all bad news. No, not bad at all. Garth, we'll leave it there. Thanks as always for joining us, and we'll see you next week Tuesday. That is Traders Corner uh, with Garth McKenzie, founder and editor. Trader's Corner is brought to you by IG.